friends, welcome back to another episode of the Fielder Church Podcast. My name is Maddie Wong and I'm the creative director here at Fielder Church. We are continuing in our three-part series talking about community and discipleship. And for today's episode, we are going to share with you how community and discipleship actually go hand in hand. We're going to talk about the Great Commission and discipleship multiplication. So stay tuned. You are in for a treat. But today I've invited two of my friends and co-workers to join me for this conversation. So why don't you guys introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, my name is Carlos Montoya. I am the community group pastor here at Fielder Church. I'm married to my beautiful wife, Lana. We have two children, Chantel and Micah, and I love Jesus, I love baseball, and I love food. So that's a little bit about Those me there. Those are good. So, yeah, Top three. Yeah, pretty wow. good. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my name is Chance Coleman, and I am the D Groups pastor here at Fielder Church. I am married to my beautiful wife, Tessia. Uh, I have no children, which is beautiful to us right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good season. Uh, yeah, and that's I'd, I've got a beautiful cat named Oatmeal. I yep. did not know that. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Cat named oh, man, I'm not a cat person. No. I got a big yeah. dog. So. <laughs> I wasn't before either. <laughs> you weren't? Okay, I'm sure it no. feels great. Okay, yeah. Right. Yeah, I got converted. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, well, thanks for joining us. Yeah. So first, right out of the gate, I want you guys to share, how does discipleship and community go together? You're both here for this conversation. Yeah. So obviously, they go together. Share with us. How do they go together? I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. No, no, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Really, I, I don't know if discipleship was designed to happen outside of community. I, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. of mine and Carlos's roles on staff, the community groups pastor, D groups pastor, and mm -hmm. really, you know, we we work more, I feel like, together than we do separate because mm -hmm. there's there's so much intertwining that happens mm -hmm. with our roles. Um, I think of mm -hmm. uh, Acts chapter 2 um, towards the end there where it talks about what the believers' lives looked like, yeah. and it looked like gathering together not just to break bread, not just to um, have all things in common, mm -hmm. but also listen to the apostles' teaching to be yeah. able to... Um, listen to the people who are leading them and to be able to model their lives after them and after Jesus. And then once both of those things were combined, you see at the end it says, mm -hmm. and the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved, yeah. right? Yeah. So you, mm -hmm. you pair up discipleship with community, and I think you see the way that God designed us to live as the church. Yeah, to, to mm -hmm. add to that, I think it's yeah. what, what Chance has said here is everywhere you read in Scripture when discipleship is being mm -hmm. taking place, it's always in at least pairs. So mm -hmm. there's always this yeah. thing of being together to do this. Yeah. Um, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. like isolation is not bad, mm. but it can lead to sin. Yeah. But the same way, trying to do something on your own is not yeah. healthy. Right. right. Bring people mm -hmm. to come along with you because they can encourage you. They're going to challenge you. Yeah. But then there's strength in numbers as well when you do something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So. That's true. Yeah. I, I love that you took it to scripture. And so yeah. when, so let's, let's talk about Paul and yeah. the original disciples. Yeah, when right. we model, you went to Acts, mm -hmm. hey, the original church. And yeah. so the birth of the church. So what qualified those guys to be disciples or disciple makers? What, what would you say? I don't know. Right. I think what qualified them above anything else was they truly believed Jesus was the Messiah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they obeyed his commands, what they told him to do. Yeah. So Jesus commanded, mm -hmm. gave really spe specific commands to them, but also to us as well. Yeah. The, one of the last words he ever said on mm -hmm. his worth is to go make disciples of all nations, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, lo and with you always at the end of the age. Yeah. And so they heard that because mm -hmm. they saw who he was and he modeled right. that for them. Yeah. And then he's, they, he's, he demonstrated that mm -hmm. he rose, rose from the dead. Yeah. And they said he really was the Messiah. So if he's, if he told us then to do it, now the last thing he's telling us to do it before he leaves the earth is to go make disciples. Yeah. I think this is really important to him. Yeah. So I think they Absolutely. took that really, really serious in order yeah. to do it. And Paul mm -hmm. is on this journey as well, mm -hmm. what it means yeah. to be a disciple. I mean, when we mm -hmm. looked at the book of Acts, Luke wrote that. Mm -hmm. Luke was not one of the original 12. Mm -hmm. He was someone, he was an apostle. He was a disciple. Mm -hmm. That means it was modeled to him what it meant to be a disciple. Mm -hmm. And he understood that and said, I have a story to tell about Jesus. Yeah. And then he talked about the church and what the formation of the church. Yeah. And then we see the beautiful life of Paul and how he didn't do it by mm -hmm. himself. He had Timothy with him. He right. had other people that joined him mm -hmm. along the way, but it was modeled well through Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So. That's good. Yeah. I think of the beginning of Acts as well. Mm -hmm. I think of uh, Jesus ascending back up in, into heaven and him talking to his disciples and saying, hey, wait until the Holy Spirit comes yeah, sure. and descends yeah. upon you, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so thinking about the people who've been walking with Jesus yeah. in his time on earth doing ministry, mm -hmm. I, what more training would you need than actually walking yeah. with Jesus, than actually learning from Jesus? But even right. Jesus says, 
if you don't have the Holy Spirit, don't go. Mm. If yeah. I if I am not with you, if if the Helper is not mm-hmm. there for you, then yeah. you should not go. So mm-hmm. we may be sitting here, and we you know in in the real world application of this, we mm-hmm. may be thinking in our in our jobs, in yeah. sports, in school. If yeah. I don't have the competency mm. to right. be able to accomplish this task, mm. then I'm not confident enough to be able mm. to go and do this. But what the Lord says, uh, what Jesus says is, hey, I, even if you are competent enough to do this, even if you do have the training to do this, yeah. that's not the thing that qualifies mm-hmm. you. It's the Holy Spirit inside of yeah. you, there you because go. there's yeah. no amount of wisdom mm-hmm. that you can attain. Mm-hmm. There's no amount of knowledge that you can have. Mm-hmm. There's no amount of worldly power mm-hmm. that you could have yeah. to influence people that will be enough mm-hmm. for you to go do the things that I'm commanding you to. But yeah. the, you know, the, the beautiful thing about this mm-hmm is that no matter, regardless of, of what's true about those things in yeah. us, all of us who call ourselves Christians, all of us who yeah. call upon Jesus as Lord, we yeah. have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Yeah. It's no yeah. longer us who live, but Christ who lives inside of right. us. And so with that being the case, mm-hmm. there's no amount of training that qualifies us. It's yeah. the Holy Spirit. And since we all have the Holy Spirit, we're mm-hmm. all qualified who are followers yeah. of Jesus to go and make disciples. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something really good that I think we all need to hear yeah. because of the fear of stepping in and quote unquote leading people. Right. It, it can be crippling sometimes yeah. mm-hmm. for people. And yeah. so for you guys to reflect and share, hey, here's what I've seen in God's word mm-hmm. where he says, hey, these disciples were qualified. They were a bunch of misfits, you know, right. go and read yeah. about yeah. them. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, they had fears. They had anxieties, yeah. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but look how God used them. So yeah. that is yeah. such an encouragement. Um, so then shifting a little bit, what, how did the disciples, I guess, view discipleship to right. use that word two times? I guess like what motivated them? I mean, it's amazing to see how God used them mm-hmm. um, right. to advance the church. But yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think about the command that Jesus gave the disciples to go and make disciples. Yeah. You, know, you see in Matthew 20, 28, mm-hmm. he says, go therefore and make disciples. It's it's not a suggestion that he gives. It's it's yeah. a command that yeah. he mm-hmm. gives, right? That's right. Um, and so really, I, I believe yeah. the disciples saw it that way, that if they saw their King Jesus raise from the dead, walk and talk with them, mm-hmm. guiding them and, and and building their trajectories to go off into the different ways that he had intended and planned for them. Then when they told, when he told them to do something, they were going to listen no matter what that yeah, looked like, right? right? And so mm-hmm. um, there's nothing mm-hmm. about that that's different than us besides mm-hmm. maybe the physically seeing Jesus, yeah. but we still see Jesus as Lord. We still trust and believe mm-hmm. what he said. And if that's the case and mm-hmm. we hear him say, go and make disciples of all the nations, then we... Yeah we should take that personally. Yeah. We should be able to look Absolutely. at that and say that's, he wasn't just talking to a specific amount of people. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember hearing mm-hmm. it said like this before, if, mm-hmm. if you call yourself a follower of Jesus, mm-hmm. then you've got a jersey and you're in the game. You're not sitting <laughs> yeah, on the bench. Right. You're not in the bleachers. You yeah. know, you, you've got a jersey and you're mm-hmm. in the game. You're playing. So, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I think that's how the yeah. disciples saw it, is that mm-hmm. we're we're all we've all got jerseys on and we've yeah. all got a role to play in the mm-hmm. midst of this. Yeah, I yeah. think that when we the last podcast you talked mm-hmm. about discipleship and yeah. you know discipleship means to be a learner mm-hmm. like you're a student of someone so when the original disciples were learners or students of jesus he yeah. was teaching them what to do and he mm-hmm. says now go do it and so what we need to do if we mm-hmm. say we're disciples of jesus follow of jesus mm-hmm. we are still students of him yeah. and we are obeying his commands mm-hmm. and i think what we also not to remember is that Discipleship doesn't mean to bring someone just to church. Yeah. Right. You, that's part of discipleship. Yeah, you want to invite them to come mm-hmm. and do corporate worship with the mm-hmm. body of Christ. But yeah. discipleship means, just like mm-hmm. Chance said, he, you're lo- walking yeah. alongside of them. You're mm-hmm. teaching them as you go. Yeah. And it's a daily thing that you're doing. Mm-hmm. And just to be yeah. invested in someone's life mm-hmm. or in lives of other people. And just to do it yeah. together in the community. Right. I think that's a huge part of what discipleship looks like. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. And the disciples, I mean, they spent three years, three years. living with Jesus, right. mm-hmm. seeing Absolutely. him interact, just walking, you know, talking yeah. to people. And so they didn't do it alone either. They did, they it, right. did it in yeah. community. He's, right. And he would send them out yeah. and then come back yeah. as a teachable lesson. Mm-hmm. What did you learn? Right. What did it look like? Okay, yeah. great. Do it again. And so yeah. we see along the three years, he didn't yeah. just, just raise them and say, mm-hmm. see you later. He is application yeah. along the way, I mean, mm-hmm. practical along the way. He'll send them out to do things yeah. together, right. then come back. And mm-hmm. he used everything as a teachable moment. Yeah. yeah. If, if Paul says, That's imitate good. me as I imitate mm-hmm. Christ, yeah. Yeah. and you see Christ mm-hmm. having these 12 disciples mm-hmm. that he brought in and yeah. he poured his life into, yeah. that he right. said, wherever I go, you're going to go. Whatever I say, 
right. you're going mm -hmm. to teach others mm -hmm. whatever I'm going to do you're going to do as follows yeah um if that's what Paul is talking about mm -hmm. there when he says imitate me as I imitate Christ yeah. um then that's the model that we should have as well yeah. that we mm -hmm. uh are looking at Christ and we're trying to model our lives as much as yeah. we can to him both the things mm -hmm. that he's done and both the values that he has yeah. the things that he loves that he mm -hmm. hates and then for the people around us who are maybe a couple mm -hmm. steps behind us in yeah. our in their faith journey mm -hmm. in their walk with Christ we can just say hey bring your life close to mine mm -hmm. so you can see what I'm doing yeah not to say what I'm doing is perfect mm -hmm. you're, right. you're gonna see the good things mm -hmm. about what I'm doing the things that do look yeah. like Jesus but you're also going to see the ways that I don't look like Jesus mm -hmm. and me repent of those yeah, things that's right. because that's, that's really good. what a disciple is mm -hmm. it's it, we're never going to attain perfection mm -hmm. until eternity right? Yeah. right um but to be able to say hey I'm striving for this and that's a mm -hmm. good thing yeah and for us to strive towards that not for the sake of earning anything from mm -hmm. the Lord but yeah. for the sake of looking more and more like Christ are are the model of what it looks like to live the fullest yeah. expression of human life that we can. Mm -hmm. That's so, good. Yeah. yeah. You're not making mm -hmm. disciples like over there right. at a class or at a certain time. That's right. You're right. saying, hey, come with me, walk with me, That's do right. life with me. You know, yeah. we have mission trips here as a part of oh the gosh. life of our church. Yeah, and right. so whenever you go on a mission trip, maybe overseas, a lot of times people act differently. They might that, be right. more 100%. bold because yes. they're going yes. on a mission, yeah. you know? And so how do we live that way here? Like, right. you know, here back at home, right. like living on mission, living yeah. sent here, you know? Yeah, I think yeah. the word living live in sent and mm -hmm. when Phil Church would say at the end of everything, you are sent. Yeah. Right. And not just sent, see you later, mm -hmm. you are sent to go make disciples. That's right. what, what's the meaning behind that. So we are supposed to go if it's at work, if it's at our homes, at a restaurant, mm -hmm. any extracurricular activities to do, anything we do, we're supposed to be sent to go make disciples and what that looks like. So when right. we go on a mission trip, I think it's natural because I think you're starting to do something mm -hmm. that God yeah. intended you to do, which is mm -hmm. serve others. And right. Philippians mm -hmm. 2, that's what Paul's going to talk about. Yeah. Like you are serving other people mm -hmm. and you're like, there's something good behind it. I, there's it's warm and I feel good about <laughs> yeah. this, but it's yeah. not for, it's not for my own benefit and glory. Right. It's for the glory of God Himself. Mm -hmm. And so, all throughout right. history, you see mm -hmm. when I use example of like the bubonic plague, mm -hmm. everybody is running um, mm -hmm. because they're scared of it. Yeah. The only people who stay behind to help were the Christians mm -hmm. because they're like, these people need help. Mm -hmm. We're going to serve them. And like, yeah. I'm too scared of dying. They're like. Like, use the words of Paul <laughs> to live as Christ to die as gain. That's like good, if I'm right. dying, I'm going to heaven. Yeah. But they just wanted to serve other people. Mm. So when you start serving somebody, mm -hmm. man, that's right. part of discipleship yeah. and what it means to serve other people. Mm -hmm. And other people are going to see that and they're like, I, I, want, I think I want to do that too. Like, well, come yeah. on, come with me. Mm -hmm. We have got this trip going, or we got this activity plan, or this project doing. Why don't you come along to help us with that yeah. and let us start modeling what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus? Yeah, yeah. that's the that's beautiful good. thing about community. Mm -hmm. You know, discipleship within community is that people can see everything. Yes. You know, you're you're open, and that may sound like a scary thing, <laughs> yeah. you know, but really, that's that's supposed to be a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. You know, we yeah. we think about um, our relationship with the Lord, and a lot of times we compare it to mm -hmm. maybe our relationship with the spouse, yeah. saying that it when we are most fully loved, when we're most fully known, that there's nothing that the Lord doesn't know about me, and he yeah. still says that he loves me, that mm -hmm. is incredibly vulnerable, but the the love that we're all desiring to have mm -hmm. in our lives, yeah. and, and that's what we strive for when mm -hmm. we're, um, you know, with our spouses as well, we're both fully known and fully loved, yeah. but um, you see a lot of these mm -hmm. uh, passages of scripture yeah. in the New Testament mm -hmm. where we yeah. attribute it a lot to, to mm -hmm. marriages and yeah. relationships with spouses, but mm -hmm. more often than not, you'll see these these passages that are particularly used mm -hmm. for wedding context yeah. are actually in the context of community. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the yeah. times it's it's not necessarily geared mm -hmm. towards. Um, it, it's just really helpful for marriage yeah. context because it's talking about um, living with one another, being open, submitting to one another. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah. really that's that's shared mm -hmm. in the context of community. So when yeah. we look at community and we we see that our lives are open to mm -hmm. each other, we see that hey, that my my heart, my mind, um, everything that I'm that I'm thinking, that I'm processing through, everything that I'm doing is open up to you, yeah. so that I can be held accountable to look and act more like Christ, but yeah. also so that those who have been walking with Christ for a longer time those that are um, just it may not yeah. even be positional leaders but just leaders because of experience because yeah. of time because of time spent with Jesus mm -hmm. others who are younger yeah. can see the lives of the people who are older you yeah. know those again not just age-wise but spiritually not yeah. just so yeah yeah that that's mm -hmm. really beautiful 
uh, yeah. in the context yeah. of community and, and mm-hmm. discipleship. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Cool. That's good. Um, so when talking about somebody who makes disciples, yeah. who makes mm-hmm. disciples, right. we've kind of danced around a little bit, but let's, let's nail some points down around mm-hmm. what qualities uh, make a good disciple mm-hmm. maker. Right. If mm-hmm. you're saying, hey, strive to look more like Christ, right. how, how would we describe somebody who is a good disciple maker? Right. How do they see the world? How do they act? Right. Yeah. Oh, that's a good, good mm-hmm. question. We can yeah. bounce back and forth, you yeah. know, yeah. like, yeah. let's yeah. build that's this really person, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. We strive I, yeah, I think when you look at scripture, I, mm-hmm. I was I was just reading this book called, uh, I think it's called Multiplication in the Real World. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, spiritual Multiplication spiritual in the Real World. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it talks about, towards the end of the book, the ways that it describes leaders in the church or the way that it describes people who are disciple makers in the church. And it sections it off into two sections. Mm-hmm. It says... Com- competencies Mm -hmm. so things that you should be good at doing Mm -hmm. in order to be a leader and that that list was about this big but (laughs) then there was another list on this side that was about this big that was about character Mm -hmm. you know the kind of character of people that Mm -hmm. are in leadership that are pouring their lives Mm -hmm. and the people around them so you could say i'm not good at this i'm not Mm -hmm. good at that i I, i'm not quite sure if i'm confident in doing this thing Mm -hmm. um this action that i have to do in order to make disciples but if you have a character Mm -hmm. that is chasing Mm -hmm. after the lord if Mm -hmm. you are somebody who um seeks to look more and more like jesus then i think the competency we can work on you know we we can train we can help and that's why i'm here that's why carlos is here we Mm -hmm. want to help train you to to grow in these competencies Mm -hmm. you know so we can work on that but really Mm -hmm. um what we want to focus on is is hey if you are Mm -hmm. telling people imitate me as i imitate christ if you're opening your life up to people Mm -hmm. which is the hope in discipleship right um, then mm-hmm. I want you to live a life worth following. There's yeah. been a couple people, as I've mm-hmm. been thinking about discipleship here at Fielder, I, I've been asking the pastors, I've mm-hmm. been asking some staff members, yeah. um, who are some of the most respectable people in our congregation? Who are yeah. some of the people that um, people just look up to? They don't need a position to be seen as a leader. They're yeah. just a leader. Right. Because I, I want those people mm-hmm. to be the ones who start making disciples and then everything flow right. from them. Mm-hmm. Because really, if, if yeah. you know, Take you for instance, mm-hmm. Maddie. Mm-hmm. If if yeah. you are mm-hmm. somebody who's striving to look more like Jesus, right. and then you have a group of gals mm-hmm. under you who are right. striving to look more like you, mm-hmm. I want yeah. a couple. Of, you know, mm-hmm. I want a bunch of Maddies running around <laughs> our church. I want a bunch of Maddie Wongs running around our church uh, because if there are more Maddies mm-hmm. running around our church, then there are more people who are looking more like Jesus right. running around mm-hmm. our church as well. So yeah, um, it's good. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. that to, to add to that. Mm-hmm. Um, when we look at what it means to be a disciple and like, mm-hmm. if we only wait and to wait, I'm not good enough to be a right. disciple yet. Mm-hmm. You're never going to yeah. feel like you're good enough to be a disciple. Mm-hmm. Is that what it's like, you can't yeah. be competent. I'm not competent enough. Like mm-hmm. you just start the process yeah. and say, okay, I'm going to follow Jesus. I want to follow his commands and mm-hmm. I want to bring people along to do this with me. Yeah. We'll f- let us work with you along the way to be- become a, a, a disciple maker. Right. Mm-hmm. You're not perfect. And yeah. if you wait to think you got right, everything, no. all your ducks in mm-hmm. before you do it, yeah. Yeah. you're going to be 90, 100 years old and like, mm-hmm. and now right. I'm too old to do it, but you're never too old to do it. But yeah. start now. It's mm-hmm. a good way to do it. I think um, one of the great questions I like to ask people mm-hmm. about um, like, who was their favorite mm-hmm. teacher growing up? Yeah. Um, of, in high school, junior high, elementary. Mm-hmm. And they always think of one teacher and you ask them why. Why yeah. was that? Uh, teacher so important. It wasn't because um, they are really good at teaching mm-hmm. or anything. It was yeah. two things. They are passionate about what they were teaching, and they are personal. And made them feel like they they were mm-hmm. known. Yeah. And so when you are passionate about being a follower of Jesus, and you make that person think that you care about them, you not just think about it. Like they know you care about them. Right. Man, you got them, mm-hmm. and they're going to follow you. Yeah. And as you follow mm-hmm. Christ, yeah. then you're going to make disciples. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think what what Chance said earlier is really really important. Mm-hmm. If you don't have the Holy Spirit guiding you to do this, yeah. you're not making disciples of Jesus. You're mm-hmm. making disciples of Maddie's mm-hmm. or yeah. Chance or Carlos. Yeah. Right, right. And yeah. that mm-hmm. is a dangerous place yeah. to be. Right. Mm-hmm. We won't make disciples of Jesus. So, yeah. but if you're a follower of Jesus, mm. hey, start now. Like, come yeah. on, let's go. And I, yeah. we want to help you along good. the way. The Jesus. qualification is. Mm-hmm. You have the Holy Spirit living inside right. of you, yep. and mm-hmm. that happens when mm-hmm. uh, Jesus is Lord of your life, right? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. some of the greatest mm-hmm. disciple makers that I've known yeah. are like 
people who recently became followers of Jesus wow. because they're so they're, excited they are, really yeah. about yeah. what God has just done yeah. in their life that they think I, I need to go tell somebody. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly this, right. this, yeah. he, hey, my it. friend who I've, you know, my coworker who, you know, we mm -hmm. both used to like talk trash about these Christians in our life. I need to tell you about Jesus yeah. because now like, can I, can I, you know, come alongside mm -hmm. me as I process through this with you. So yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah some of the, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is the thing that qualifies you. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is as you grow mm -hmm. as a disciple in Jesus, yeah. as you grow as a person mm -hmm. who's walking and talking and acting more like Christ, yeah. the people who you're bringing alongside you, mm -hmm. who you're discipling, they grow yeah. as yes. well as mm -hmm. you grow. And so it's not like you have to be some mm -hmm. sage wizard that yeah. you have this gray beard right. you're some Gandalf or Dumbledore <laughs> that's like let me tell you everything that I know um but you're saying hey I'm growing mm -hmm. why don't you grow with me yeah you know let's that's yeah. good. let's let's mm -hmm. all come together and as I yeah. learn these things and I process mm -hmm. this through these things yeah I'm just gonna share that stuff with you mm. so yeah yeah I absolutely. love that I yeah. mean you're you're saying this and I can immediately think and brought to my mind the woman who led me to Christ. Mm -hmm, like yeah. mm -hmm. she lived with me my senior year of high school mm -hmm. and I thought I knew Jesus and I didn't. And mm -hmm. she loved me. She mm -hmm. spoke life into me. Yeah. But every morning she'd wake up, open her Bible on our kitchen table and say, yeah. hey, how, you want to come read with me or do mm -hmm. you want to read this? And then over time, I saw what it was like to live like Christ follower. She loved Jesus. She'd invite people into our home yeah. uh, that I didn't know. She'd meet at Starbucks, like yeah. cook dinner for them. And I just got yeah. to watch her love right. me, love yeah. these people and live as a follower of Christ. And it to this day is like the model that mm. I use to love and serve people. Absolutely. people. And so right. um, do you guys have stories like that where you have discipled yeah. people or you have seen them be discipled either within community or mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. personally? Mm -hmm. I, pretty personally speaking, um, I, there was a young gentleman that I met. His name was Josh mm -hmm. growing up. And I just invested in him and mm -hmm. um, brought him to our youth group. And there mm -hmm. were a lot of other guys that really, again, the discipleship didn't take about just me and him. It was, yeah. there's a group of us that started discipling him. Mm -hmm. And Josh became a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so we were trying to model what it means to look like to be a follower of Jesus. Yeah. Well, Josh knew a guy named Sam. <laughs> and so Josh started inviting Sam. Mm -hmm. Josh led Sam to Christ. Yeah. And so Sam then started to hang out what it meant to be a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then Sam knew a guy named Aaron huh. wow. and then and, and introduced him to Jesus. And so wow. Aaron then became a disciple of Jesus. So mm -hmm. the multiplication started taking yeah. place, but it all started with an investment of Josh. And wow. so you see this this uh, generations of tree that's growing of yeah. people like, again, I'm not taking credit for this, mm -hmm. and um, but it, you're seeing that yeah. fruit taking place because of the obedience of God to say to go make disciples. And it is Absolutely. as easy as just, Hey, let me invest in Josh. Yeah. And then when we say go now you go invest in somebody. Yeah. And then he invested in Aaron. Right. Or Aaron Sam. And Sam goes, mm -hmm. Now you go invest in someone. And he invests in Aaron. And yeah. so then you see the multiplication taking yeah, place. It right. was such a beautiful thing. That and we beautiful. still have a great relationship. That was mm -hmm. twenty years ago. And right. we still have a wonderful relationship. Yeah. I was able to do a couple of their weddings for them. Um, wow. because of just the opportunity wow. just really cause invest in them. Mm -hmm. It's just a beautiful thing. Yeah. Loved That's, it. That's really great. Yeah. I kind of have an example of when I did this mm -hmm. poorly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Which I which I think might be helpful as well. Yeah, I, I think so. A couple of years ago, especially during COVID, I was mm -hmm. leading this this guy named Guard uh, mm -hmm. back up in Washington, uh, and Guard was a mm -hmm. Greek student at Washington State University. Mm -hmm. He um, was a mm -hmm. leader, like a community and, and discipleship group leader, mm -hmm. and so I was on staff yeah. mm -hmm. uh, up up at Resonate Church, and yeah. so I was leading Guard because he was a leader. Mm -hmm. um, and so as I was leading him all throughout the first semester of school, I was really busy with work, and I didn't necessarily prioritize meeting yeah. and gathering mm -hmm. with with the guys that I was leading and yeah. guard was in that group mm -hmm. uh, outside of the times that mm -hmm. I was slated to we mm -hmm. would just meet for our meeting times and then mm -hmm. and then not really see each other outside of that because of the busyness yeah. and and January is when we went on a church plant vision trip to mm -hmm. Salt Lake City and mm -hmm. there um, me and guard guard signed up for that and me and guard were hanging out that whole week mm -hmm. so we uh went out and and started to talk with people in the city we mm -hmm. were uh talking with uh people from the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints just yeah. to process through okay what's the culture mm -hmm. like here How, what's it going to be like for people to church plant here yeah. i'm just kind of gathering that information and he got to be with me and see me spark up conversations about jesus spark mm -hmm. up conversations about you know the culture of the city start to yeah. uh ask really intentional questions to mm -hmm. people, help people feel known, help people yeah. feel interest in what God was going to be doing there. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting down with yeah. him eating on, on one of those days and he just kind of looked at me and was like, Chance, you're a good leader. I just haven't seen that until today. 
Oof. You know, even though mm. I was leading him in the D group yeah. that whole first semester yeah. where we were talking about how his uh, community group was going. Right. I was asking him about his relationship with his girlfriend. I was, yeah. you know, t talking with him about what we had been reading in scripture. Because yeah. we weren't living our lives together, he wasn't mm -hmm. able to see me yeah. live a life mm -hmm. worth modeling to him. Yeah, he wasn't able to see me live a mm -hmm. life that was worth multiplying into mm -hmm. the next generation of followers of Jesus. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. now that there was the opportunity yeah. to do so, he started to realize, mm -hmm. oh, you you are worth following. Yeah. This this is a relationship mm -hmm. that I, I want to invest yeah. in. Um, I just haven't seen mm. that until today. Yeah. I just haven't seen that mm -hmm. until we got together to do this. And yeah. so that was kind of a spark in my head of I, I can't mm -hmm. just do these meetings. I can't, I need to find time in my schedule to yeah. be able to, so that they can mm -hmm. see me even more than like a yeah. lunch, even more right. than a coffee, you know, where we sit down and talk. Yeah. They need to see how I live life. Mm -hmm. They need to see yeah. how, uh, like what that looks like mm -hmm. in order for them to know, okay, this is the person who's leading me. This right. is how they live life. Mm -hmm. And these are the mistakes they're making. Yeah. And the things that they're really mm -hmm. good at, how do yeah. I model that for my life as well? So That's good. I yeah. mean, I can definitely think through the most impactful things that I have learned. I right. mean, have been over at, um, shout out to Matt and Lauren Hunter mm -hmm. <laughs> or staff, but just watching them parent, yeah. watching them um, uh, love each other, you know, just yeah. um, speaking life over each other. I mean, I've learned yeah. how to be a spouse and mm -hmm. one day a parent, you know, discipline, you know, like right. I learned just yeah. being around them when their kids are acting up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you learn so much whenever you just right. live life with people or you're That's just right. around them in the messy. And yeah. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's good. Absolutely. So I want to ask you, how does multiplication happen? You mentioned it a little bit, Carlos, mm -hmm. and you two, um, because the goal is not to you know, disciple somebody and then be done. Right. The goal right. you were sharing here is multiplication. Like That's how the church was birthed. So how does this happen? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at first mm -hmm. I, I think... Like how I looked at you first, I was like, yeah, yeah right. Go ahead, you got it, James. That's funny. Um, I, I think mm -hmm. of, you know, how... Uh, Jesus talks about the church and he talks about it kind of like a, you know, a temple, a building, mm. and it talks about Jesus is the cornerstone. It talks about yeah. how, Peter, you are the rock in which my my church will be formed. Mm -hmm. um, so if we take that analogy further and we say, okay, if, if Jesus is the cornerstone and, and Peter is the rock in which the church mm. is, is formed, yeah. then every other Christian that is a part of the church moving forward mm -hmm. is another building block mm. to that um, to the the structure that God is building yeah. here on earth, which is the church. So if we think about that, then I can trace, as as far as I can trace mm -hmm. my lineage of discipleship back is, yeah. is as far as this guy named Clint. Hmm. Uh, this guy named Clint pour into this guy named Drew, mm -hmm. who ended up being my pastor uh, mm -hmm. in, in at Resonate. Yeah. Uh, Drew poured into this guy named Brian, and mm -hmm. Brian poured into this guy named Chance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was kind of the lineage of what it mm -hmm. looked like. And wow. so I'm thinking there's one brick in the building. There's, you know, Clint, there's yeah. another brick, Drew, mm -hmm. there's another brick, Brian, and now here's me. Mm -hmm. I now have the opportunity to either make this gaping hole mm. in the structure by not building up from what started all the way back, mm -hmm. you know, to Jesus, but yeah. from what I can trace back to Clint, mm -hmm. or I can keep pouring into people so that what God is building in the church continues to grow. So it continues to get built up upon the yeah. way that it has built, been mm -hmm. built up upon yeah. up until mm -hmm. me in, yeah. at this point. So That's my good. my biggest mm -hmm. fear in discipleship, my biggest fear in my mm -hmm. walk with Christ is that I would be mm -hmm. a cul-de-sac, yeah. you know, that, mm -hmm. that so many people would would put in so much time and effort and focus mm. to be able to make sure that I am the the person that God mm. desires me to be, yeah. and then I and then I do nothing with that. Mm -hmm. I might you know fill out some spreadsheets. I might work mm -hmm. at a church, mm -hmm. um, but if I don't pour my life into somebody, then what every the culmination of what everybody has been pouring mm -hmm. into yeah. you know generation to generation mm -hmm. for it to get to me All at right. this point, then that never goes to anything. Mm -hmm. And so just even if you're sitting here and you're you're a follower of Jesus and you're thinking about the lineage mm -hmm. of of the people who poured into people who poured into people who poured into people that's right. leading up to you. Mm -hmm. Think about how far the gospel had to go in order yeah. to get to you in right. the first place. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't get to you for you to be a cul-de-sac, for yeah. you to say, this is mine and I'm going to hold on to it. I, I I really believe that God gave you the gospel mm -hmm. in order for it to fill you up. Yeah. 
to then overflow into the people around you. Yeah. So that that doesn't answer your question, but that's kind of like the <laughs> the vision of yeah. multiplication. Good. You know, so I really think good. when it when I'm looking at multiplication, mm-hmm. I think th- the way of doing mul- multiplication mm-hmm. looks different for different people. Mm. Um, but do you have the common bond that's there? Mm-hmm. Um, multiplication. We're talking about gospel multiple take multiplication of discipleship. Yeah, the gospel has to be at the core of this. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a fall of Jesus. That's good. And if that's the the, the the common denominator of it, so he may have been this guy invested in this guy and this guy invested and then it got to me. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times multiplication takes place in your own home mm-hmm. where my parents modeled this well for me. Of, mm-hmm. Our home yeah. is always welcome and open to other people. Yeah. And so we would have friends. I can't tell you the number of people that came to live <laughs> growing up in our house yeah. that they had nowhere else to go. Mm-hmm. But we wanted to be Jesus to them. Yeah. And so yeah. like, you're welcome here. Mm-hmm. And so they would That's come good. and live with us. The funny part was like, mm-hmm. we had so many times the cops called on us because people were coming in and out of our house all <laughs> hours of the night. And they're like, no, it's just the Matoyas are. This is what they do. Um, but even like, today, a lot of people call my parents, they, my mom and dad, because wow. they they felt like they love them. Mm-hmm. And so when my wife yeah. and I are looking at multiplication, mm-hmm. what we want to do to help model, mm-hmm. we say our home is open to mm-hmm. anyone who needs the place to stay. Yeah for our, our daughter mm-hmm. her friends need a place this is a safe place for them to come but we want to mold, model multiplication mm-hmm. through our own home yeah, and through our living good. room and through our dinner mm-hmm. table yeah. just having conversations just to model with them and just mm-hmm. pray with them and talk with them um yeah. so i think the end result mm-hmm. is still the same you're yeah. multiplying because you want to invest yeah. in people's lives and say mm-hmm. hey we care about you we love yeah. you but the the common denominator all this because we're followers of jesus yeah. and we love him first and we want to pour and invest in mm-hmm. you because we want you then to say hey i can do this with somebody else yeah, say, yeah. absolutely Absolutely do it. And so I think yeah. I think if mm-hmm. if a person knows you care about them, like yeah. we said earlier, um, and I think it's they have to know they're not a project. That's good. If they know mm-hmm. they're a project, they're not gonna follow you. No. They, can if see you care, that. absolutely mm-hmm. they can see that. If you if they know that you care for them, mm-hmm. they're like, Man, they love me. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'll mm-hmm. you want me to set the table? I don't yeah. even live here. Okay, I'll set the table. <laughs> right. Uh, right. But it is whatever it looks like, then they they're gonna say, yeah. I wanna do that and mm-hmm. I wanna be a part of that and and yeah. you're a follower of Jesus, tell me more about what that looks like. And mm-hmm. there's your multiplication takes place. And then yeah. the model yeah. they know is what you've demonstrated for mm-hmm. them. And so then mm-hmm. you teach them, and yeah. then they're going to do the same thing with other people. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. To really, mm-hmm. to go back to the Great Commission, yeah. it says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah teaching them to obey all all that that I've commanded them. What did Jesus just do in that same Mm sense? Commanded his disciples to go and make disciples. So really, if we're teaching our disciples Mm -hmm. to obey all that Jesus has commanded, Mm -hmm. it's part of that is to go make disciples. And so if we look at our lives Mm -hmm. and what we're commanded to, we're not just called to be disciple makers. We're called to be disciple makers Mm -hmm. who make disciple making disciple makers. Yes, It's really, (laughs) so we are disciples. Uh who make yeah. disciple mm-hmm. makers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's absolutely. Good. So for, for us mm-hmm. to be able to look at our lives and to be able to look at the people we're pouring into, and I don't know if this is unattractive or attractive, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. to be able to look at the people yeah. that we're pouring into mm-hmm. and just to say, I'm not pouring mm-hmm. into you just for your sake. Mm-hmm. So if we if we get in our minds that, hey, mm-hmm. I'm pouring into this person solely because I want them to be okay and mm-hmm. I want all of this for them, then I think we're missing the point of discipleship. I think we pour into people mm-hmm. to say, hey, you, I'm going to pour into you um, because you are going to have access to so many people that I will never have access yeah. to. You you are in places, in friend groups, mm-hmm. in social circles, at a workplace that mm-hmm. I will never be able to touch, that I'm yeah. never going to cross paths yeah. with, mm-hmm. but you're going to. Yeah. And so if I, if I know how to share mm-hmm. the gospel, yeah. but I'm never going to end up in your mm-hmm. workplace, what I need to do is teach you how to share the gospel. Yeah. Instead, you may say, well, you already know how to share mm-hmm. the gospel chance, yeah. so why don't you yeah. just go yeah. and mm-hmm. do that? Well, I, I can't make it into your office building. You <laughs> right. know? So for you to be able to, for me mm-hmm. to be able to look at you and say, yeah. I'm going to pour into you so mm-hmm. you know how to share the gospel, so then you can go share the, the gospel mm-hmm. with the people around you. That yeah. way, what I mm-hmm. have, I'm not just keeping to myself, mm-hmm. but I'm pouring it into yeah. the people um, yeah. down the line. Mm-hmm. So. Um, So yeah, it's really Mm -hmm. what is our, what are we here for, Uh essentially? That's the question, what Uh are we here for? If we're here after we start following Jesus to say, hey, I'm just here now, now that Jesus is Lord, to experience Mm -hmm. this life, you know, that is filled with darkness and brokenness Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, 
just darkness and brokenness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I'm just here to experience all of this mm -hmm. now that I'm a follower of Jesus and yeah. then get to experience mm -hmm. glory and perfection when I'm mm -hmm. in the presence of the Father for eternity, yeah. that just doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. much sense to me. I think there's a mission and a purpose for why mm -hmm. we're here. And I think the mm -hmm. the mission and the purpose that God has for us yeah. is to go and make these disciples. Right. Take what we have. God, mm -hmm. God is reaching people all across the world. Right. And the way, the mode that he has to reach the world mm -hmm. from the beginning of time has always mm -hmm. been his church. Yeah. Yes. How does his church do that? Does mm -hmm. it just pop up church buildings all over the place? Like, it, I don't think that's the case. I think mm -hmm. the way that we do that is yeah. we pour ourselves into the next generation so then they can pour themselves into the next generation. Yeah. Not just generations as like, you know, boomers, Gen Z, all yeah. that. But if, if I'm a generation, mm -hmm. I'm pouring into the next generation. Yeah. And then there's generation and generation mm -hmm. and generation generation yeah. of people after that mm -hmm. so, yeah. that's yeah. good yeah um so at fielder we have kind of the structures of d groups right. and community mm -hmm. groups what is your vision for multiplication within those uh, yeah, yeah going I forward i think the uh going forward what mm -hmm. we have to understand is we no longer want to look at discipleship groups mm -hmm. d groups and community groups do different things yeah. yeah we want to see them that we believe that moving forward that mm -hmm. multiplication discipleship community all happen in one place together mm -hmm. yeah and so when yeah. we're looking at like, what is our next step what does it look like mm -hmm. for someone like i want to get started in the d group i want to be discipled i want to yeah. make disciples if they come to chance and mm -hmm. i the very first thing we're going to ask them like let's find you a community to get invested in yes mm, and so and inside the community group and then mm -hmm. once you're in a community group, it's like, okay, now we want to disciple you. Mm -hmm. And then part of a whole thing behind mm -hmm. discipleship and community group is is multiplication. Mm -hmm. So we're going to model this. Okay. And then every time I meet with new leaders for community groups that we're starting all the time, mm -hmm. I always say find co-leaders to do this mm -hmm. with you because our mm -hmm. prayer and our goal is not that this group just sit here mm -hmm. and just grow and just not do anything. Yeah. We say we get to a point where like, okay, no, now co-leaders, you're going to go start a new group. Now yeah. you find co-leaders because we're going to multiply this group together. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah. and then allows this group then continue to grow mm -hmm. again. They find new yeah. co-leaders, and so okay. multiplication starts taking place in there. But I think the yeah. first thing is, if you want to mm. be discipleship and multiplication, let's get mm -hmm. you in a community group first, mm. and then we're going to disciple you up. Okay, and what it means, and then we're going to send you out yeah. to go do the same thing. That's yeah. good. That's good. Absolutely. Yeah, uh -huh. for, for D groups uh -huh. to happen within community groups, uh -huh. it just makes sense. If we're asking uh -huh. people to, to get vulnerable with yeah. each other, if we're asking people yeah. to, to confess and repent of sin yeah. and to be able to uh -huh. uh, walk in a new way of life together, uh -huh. um, it, it just makes sense that we would ask people to do that within uh -huh groups yeah. of people that already are spending time with each yeah. other, that mm -hmm. already like each other, that yeah. already know a little bit about each other's lives, yeah. that it just makes it a little bit of a sweeter mm -hmm. opportunity to say, hey, mm -hmm. you guys know this about me, but you may not know yeah. it to the extent that mm -hmm. uh, people who know me surface level know. So yeah. let me open up everything mm -hmm. to you. Um, yeah. It also gives you an opportunity to say, hey, I'm uh, if I'm going to be teaching you something mm -hmm. in discipleship group, then mm -hmm. I can model that within our yeah. community group next mm -hmm. week. And so to say, if, if I'm teaching you something in a discipleship group, like how to share the gospel, for mm -hmm. example, um, then next week at community group, I'm going to invite one of my non-believing friends mm -hmm. and I'm going to try to get to a point where mm -hmm. I can share the gospel with them. Yeah. I want you to see how I do that, mm -hmm. disciple, so that yeah. in the future you can know what that looks like and you can go off and do that as mm -hmm. well because you've seen what it means yeah. to share the gospel with mm -hmm. somebody because you saw it happen yeah. within the context of community, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah. because of that, the the idea of modeling uh, ministry skills, the idea of practicing things yeah. together that just makes makes it a whole lot easier to mm -hmm. learn how to be yeah. competent in the things that mm -hmm. are required in order to be a good yeah. uh, and efficient disciple maker, mm -hmm. right? And so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So because of that, mm -hmm. as you grow in competency yeah. and as you grow in efficiency, mm -hmm. you start to see yourself not just as a member yeah. or a participant mm -hmm. of a D group yeah. or a, yeah. a community group, mm -hmm. but people start to look at you because mm -hmm. you know how to do the things that the mm -hmm. leaders know how to do. Yeah. They start to see you as a leader. So yeah. naturally, within this environment you grow in leadership mm -hmm. really the next step is just Carlos or I or, or, <laughs> or you know yeah. or even your leaders mm -hmm. looking at you and yeah. saying hey mm -hmm. you can actually do this you stuff do it yeah why don't you go do that why don't <laughs> you pair up with yeah. this other person who knows how to do this and go off and do it yourself that's really good. that's that's the heart of multiplication yeah. a lot of the times people multiply mm -hmm 
they want to multiply when they say, hey, we have a lot of people here and that we don't have any more chairs or this mm. living room is getting cramped mm. in this at this community group. We need to multiply. I would say, you know, it's probably good to multiply at that point. <laughs> right. But what I would say is mm -hmm. that you don't multiply necessarily when you have uh, no more seats. You multiply when you have ready leaders. That's good. And so that's the goal of, of discipleship groups is raising mm -hmm. up people who know how to take the gospel mm -hmm. to the people around them yeah. and how to teach others to take the mm -hmm. gospel to the people around them yeah. so that they can go mm -hmm. and multiply out of these yeah. community groups. Even if a community mm -hmm. group is only like 10 people yeah. to be able to say if we have two ready leaders then mm -hmm. five go here and five go there yeah right and then you get two mm -hmm. more living rooms of 10 people you yeah, know and good. that's that's mm -hmm. multiplication those are those are people right. that you would not have gotten mm -hmm. if you would have stayed in that cluster mm -hmm. so yeah yeah that's really good yep. um so how would somebody go about signing up or mm -hmm. getting involved in discipleship and community here at fielder and if you have any Thing coming up that they should attend. So, hey, hey all right. Like <laughs> well, really you know. great well, well, Was that yeah, a good question? Was, okay, yeah. great. <laughs> Serve it up for us up right there. Yeah. That's good. I think for community to group, it really is the simplest thing. There's two things you can do. Mm -hmm. First thing is go to filler.org slash connect mm -hmm. um, and say, and say, interested in community to group. And mm -hmm. that's going to notify us. And we can then we'll connect you. We will personally call you and set up a time to mm -hmm. meet with you. Yeah. Um, one of the campus pastors or one of the myself as a community group pastor, mm -hmm. we will meet with you to find one. Okay. The second thing we want you to do, you can go to our web page and go to filter.org slash community groups. Mm -hmm. And then there you can actually find community groups. You have over a hundred groups that you can kind of, there's a description about them. You can read about them. And awesome. then there's a little link that says visit our group. If you click that, mm -hmm. um, then what that does is sends the leader a message. Okay. And then you will get a response to that saying, hey, a leader's going to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. The leader then gets a message that mm -hmm. says, hey, Maddie Wong mm -hmm. wants to visit your community group. And then it says, please reach out to her next 48 hours. Okay. And so now not everyone's perfect. Yeah. And so sometimes they have to follow up with that as well. Yeah. But then they're going to invite you say, hey, this is what we're doing. It's so excited. You want to be a part of this? Yeah. Um, this is what we're studying. Come mm -hmm. be a part of this. And so yeah, for community that's groups, that's the best way the easiest way to do that, cool. to do that. yeah as far as d groups that mm -hmm. we have the other we also have the connect page yeah. and we also have mm -hmm. you know fielder.org slash uh discipleship groups yeah. or slash d groups uh -huh. that you could attend as well but mm -hmm. with, with really our hope for discipleship to happen within the context of community mm -hmm. right now the best way mm -hmm. to get connected to a d group in you know in the coming months mm -hmm. is to to get yourself connected to a community group okay. that's the best way to get decided mm -hmm. get connected to a discipleship group and yeah. so so if you are interested in mm -hmm. discipleship and you're you're not sure where to go or you're not mm -hmm. sure what to do, yeah. I, I would highly recommend asking the people that you go to church with, mm -hmm. asking some people yeah. that, that are uh, connected to the body at Fielder mm -hmm. Church, saying, hey, what community group are you a part of? Mm -hmm. Can I join you? Mm -hmm. Can I can, can I come along with you or follow the uh, the steps that, mm -hmm. that Carlos had just mentioned? That's a great way to yeah. get plugged in through a community group, mm -hmm. which then uh, – will get you connected to a discipleship mm -hmm. group moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. And we do have an event coming up. You do. And we have the groups <laughs> summit uh -huh. coming up on October the 22nd. Oh, and so November 5th. No, I'm sorry. We moved it to November <laughs> you 5th. Did. That's you right. Yeah. You did. Yeah. November 5th uh -huh. at group summit. It's going to be at the Pioneer campus here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want, if you're, it's, mm -hmm. I want to be a community group leader. I want to mm -hmm. be a D group leader. Mm -hmm. yep. Come to the summit. This is for you. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you practical things mm -hmm. that you can do to be a leader. And mm -hmm. we want to really commission you to mm -hmm. go and be a leader as well. And it's so, free. And it's free. It Absolutely okay. free. Yep. So you can go through our events page at mm -hmm. filter.org slash events awesome. and you're going to look for the um group summit mm -hmm. look from there will be a link you can sign up mm -hmm. through there and then you'll get for awesome. more information after you sign up about that and awesome. like we said <laughs> if you want to be a community group leader or a yeah. d group leader mm -hmm. really the only qualifications for that is that you have the holy spirit inside that's, of that's you. right <laughs> so if that's true about you we would love, we to, see love to see you on november 5th. <laughs> for sure awesome. yeah. yeah well i've loved this conversation it was so much fun i learned a lot and i know our listeners are going to be so blessed so thank you for your time and yeah. Thank you. Get your wisdom you. in this. This was yeah, fun. It was great. Mm -hmm. um, great. Well, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you loved this podcast, which I'm sure you did, you can like, share, and subscribe it or leave some feedback for us below if you're watching on YouTube or you can go to fielder.org slash podcast and leave feedback, ask questions there. I will link everything that they said in the show notes below, so make sure you check that out. But also join us next week where we are going to be starting a new series through the month of October talking about foster care and adoption. So really excited about that series. So until then, join us next week. We'll see you later. I guess. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Let us know if you have any questions or feedback from today's episode by going to fielder.org slash podcast. Or if you're watching on YouTube, just leave a comment below. If you enjoyed today's podcast, make sure to leave a rating and review. That helps this message reach more people in our community because it's our hope this podcast will equip you and many others to live as a follower of Christ outside the walls of the church.